In the shifting sands of the Namib desert, the little lacerated lizard cools its feet in the wind. Found nowhere else on the globe, this little reptile is perfectly adapted to the scorching days of one of the world's most variable ecosystems. Scientists believe animals like this lizard can teach us about adapting to climate change. Mia Kabajani is a young Namibian researcher who is working on a long-term monitoring program at the Gobabeb Training and Research Center. What we can learn from these animals and their adaptations is that if things get hard for you, you just have to learn to live with that. So it's all about adaptations. Established in 1962, the Gobabeb Training and Research Center sits at the edge of the Namib Dune Sea on the banks of the Kaisab River. Mary Seeley is a naturalized Namibian and a member of the station's management committee who has been working here since 1967. We realize that global science is going on throughout the world. And Gobabeb is, of course, a sought-after location because it's thought to be quite isolated and not being influenced by a lot of industry and other human activity. Local Topnar communities, Namibian scientists, and researchers from around the globe come here to gather data on how to live sustainably with our environment. Mia Kavajani and American scientist Christine Grumman collect climate data here for NOAA, the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So they have these um, monitoring sites all over the world and the Namib Desert is a site where the air sampling is done for carbon dioxide. The air sample from this high pole is stored in these bottles and sent back to NOAA in Colorado for analysis. The data is used by scientists like Francois Engelbrecht of South Africa's Center for Scientific and Industrial Research to track and model the effects of rising greenhouse gas emissions. The data shows the global temperature has increased by about one degree Celsius in the last century. Now, what is natural for the planet? When the planet moves from an ice age into a warmer phase, then temperature tends to increase globally at a rate of about one degree Celsius every thousand years, or perhaps two thousand years. So what we are looking at here is an increase in the global temperature that is taking place at a rate that is about ten times faster than any natural process. To understand the future of the climate of Southern Africa, Engelbrecht runs a regional climate model using the biggest computers in Africa. The evidence suggests that Southern Africa will experience double the average annual global rise in temperature. Even if the world is successful in restraining the global rise in temperature to 2 degrees Celsius, then it still means a 4 degree temperature increase for the Southern African region. This type of dramatic change has huge food security implications for Southern Africa. Higher regional temperatures mean growing seasons are shifting and rains are becoming more unpredictable. It's one way the regional climate is becoming more like the Namib Desert. At Gobabeb, the climate is so variable that some years it does not rain at all. We need to find ways in, in which we are going to adapt to those changes and be able to survive. And we need to do that wisely, because otherwise we just won't make it. We have to look towards planning. And one of the things we've been very involved in is helping communities to establish what we call uh, forums for integrated resource management. Small communities make their own decisions rather than trying to have the centralized overall management where the government comes by and gives out drought relief in the form of food or something like that. This empowers residents to take action and provides information that helps them adapt to a changing climate. Zebediah Swartboy is a local from the Topnar community. It's a good thing you have the center in the community. 
because with the EF uh, help us in many ways with uh, workshops and also with projects which helps us to sustainably live in the environment that we are living in. With the right science and the right planning, Gobabeb offers hope that we can adapt to climate change. But like the dance of the little lacerated lizard, humanity will have to adjust quickly. Reporting from the Namib Desert, this is Jeffrey Barbie for Global Post.